Good afternoon everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to my latest video, I really appreciate it um, and anyone that continues to subscribe and support me, I really appreciate that as well, uh, thank you very much, it means the world to me. Um, so, um, first and foremost, I'd just like to apologise for the lack of content last week, um, when you're only sort of one person, you need to sort of pick your battles um, for the week and then see it through and then choose new ones in the following week so um, I'll hopefully get a lot more content out uh, this week although as I've said many times um, I'm not going to be one of these pe one of these people or one of these content creators that just makes a video for the sake of making a video um, I want them to, 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 to at least sort of have some value to them where at least someone can maybe get something out, out of it I know there's people out there that will sit and just make lies for the sake of making them. I don't want to be like that. I want it to be I want it to be meaningful. Um because it's not just about creating content to try and receive monetary um assistance with that. It's that's obviously we all need that, but um this is for and first and foremost about getting a message out there. Um and, and that's what I've tried to do. I've actually had some criticism from not criticism, but people saying, oh, since you've done the UFO video that your channel sort of dropped off. And I thought, well, this channel's done better than I could ever have thought it would have or ever have hoped for. I mean, if you told me this was the numbers it would be doing when I started, I would have broken your arm off for it. Um, and the reason that I'd done the UFO video was because it had to be done. Um, we need to realise that we're not, we're not here, we're not alone in this universe, because to think that you are... It, it, it just further skews the, your reality and um, you're living a false reality so we, we need I, I said it's about raising aware, awareness about yourself and the world and that's certainly a big part of it so um i wasn't here to to, to to try and make well obviously it's nice to make friends and subscribers and all the rest of it but i'm not going to sit and watch what i'm saying just in case well, i might lose that subscriber or this subscriber might not like it. I'm, I'm sorry i can't do it that way i have to I have to just say it as, 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 as it comes really and, and, and as how I see it. And, the, and like I said, I've done that because they were the sorts of things that helped change my life. Now just because it worked for me, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. That being said, I, I still have to put it out there um, because it may work for you. And it may work for you in a different way than it did for me. Um, so, I think it was last week I'd received a... A communication from a subscriber of mine um, who had informed me of an article that they had read on the BBC website with regards to someone having their inheritance stolen and I was busy at the time and I thought I wonder what that is and it was a couple of days before I could get round to it and I had a look at it and I, I was absolutely I mean I, I was absolutely flabbergasted at what I was reading um, so much so that I was wondering if it, if it was true but then you look at all the communications that you've had from people through emails and um, comment sections, not to mention the fact uh, of the issues that the people were having while I was doing the job. And um, so it really shouldn't have been that surprising, but it's definitely getting worse. There's no doubt about it. Because um, what they're doing now is that they're, they're going out and using the term fraud um, for the reason that they need to recoup taxpayers money to protect the taxpayers purse as they put it and that's them that said that now i said at the start of this that this is taxpayers money they're using to do this and i got people so it's not taxpayers money it's just, it's, they call it taxpayers money this is taxpayers money so it doesn't matter what way you look at that um the taxpayer is covering it and that's it but here's the deal the taxpayers covering it, but yet they're using this money to sanction people, thus using the, using it as a weapon against them. And it goes with this is this article you're about to find out goes way beyond sanctioning. This is this is deliberate, fraudulent, daylight robbery, criminality, um, and they're actually using the proceeds of crime act to challenge this. Or to get this, to, to get people's inheritances off them. So what happened was, there was a woman, um, where was she again? Well, she was working in the co-op. Yeah, she was at Chester, she was near, she lived in a, she lived near Chester, in a place near Chester, I think it's Tarvin. Um, and she was working in, in, in the co-op. It was just a minimum part-time job, minimum wage part-time job. 
while she was caring for her mother. By the way, thanks to Claire that sent me this, just before I read it out, because I, I wouldn't have known about it if she hadn't sent me it. Um, and she was working, obviously, because when you're on carer's allowance or carer's element, it's not enough to live on. You, 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 need, you need to find some extra hours to obviously cover the bills, etc. So that's, that's what this individual had done. And she was informed and advised by a, a social worker that she didn't need to advise the DWP or Universal Credit or whatever one she was using um, about this change. Now that's unfortunate because, because she did have to report it. In fact, that, that would actually have closed her claim down because um, it would have been over 16,000. But because she didn't report it, it's then came to light that she has actually had this money. Thus, the DWP have used the Proceeds of Crime Act, and I had to read that twice, and they have used it, to get this money back based on fraud. Now, in the very first video that I, that I had recorded about this, I said that I'd, I'd look to find out where I could report the DWP for fraud, and there was no such place. There was, there was plenty, um, plenty of information on to report benefit fraud or benefit cheats. But there was there was no info, not a lot, and well, there was none on where you could report their fraud to. I've since looked again because something's something's burning in the inside of me, and I don't like this, and because it's getting worse, as you can see from the title of the video, there's been process changes as well, which I, I, I anticipated that they would maybe do something like that. I didn't think it would be that quick, but there's process changes as well now. Um, for them to use the Proceed of Crime Act to go in and take 16 grand. I know what you're thinking, I've said many times, well, they not set up a payment plan? Yes, she did. She had actually set up a payment plan of 30 pounds a month. But then, like I say, they used the, the, the proceeds of crime act to go in and recoup the whole lot. Um, the, like, I'll, I'll just, I'll read, I'll read the article to you. I might as well read it to you. Um, so the woman's told of her shock after the government seen 16 grand left for her mother because she was overpaid her carer's allowance. Um, Vivian was prosecuted for failing to declare a minimum wage co-op job while also caring for her mum. She, like I say, she was told by a social worker she didn't have to report it. And just before I move on with the next part of the article, anyone that's out there that's a social worker or in any, that's not trained in any DWP processes or universal credit, please double check any information that you're given um, because it's... <laughs> It's, it can cause a lot of problems for people because people think, well, it's okay, she's a social worker, she'll know. I don't need to report this. Then, it, boom, it comes back that actually she did. Now, I know the social worker probably thought she's done the right thing, um, but this is this is, this is has been a part of the problem. People get, well, it's, it's part of the problem anyway because most people, I mean, I used to deal with it every day. You would get one way to do a process for one person, then the person, that ne the next time that you asked, would, 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 or would you would say to that that's how you've done it, oh, well, I'll do it this way, it's wrong. So I don't, I'm not sure. It's very, very difficult when that's going on. You need to try and grasp it as best you can. So like I said, she was in, she initially agreed a payment plan with the DWP for £30 per month to cover these overpayments. Um, however, the government, dis the, the government, and this is what it says, discovered she stood to inherit £16,000 following the death of her mum and it decided to seize it. Miss Grimm told the BBC she was devastated by what happened. I thought, and this is this is a quote by Mrs. Grimm, I followed the lady's rules and looked after my mum, she said. I mean, if people look after their parents, they should be paid more money so they don't have to go to work as well. I had to go to work with bills to pay because, like I said, it's not enough to cover um, a whole household. It's a small amount, um, the, the £70 pounds a week or £78 pounds a week or whatever it is, um, to cover or, or to help out with the care. Now, I don't think it should bloody matter what your earnings are. Um... That, you should still receive that. That should be a, a separate income payment from the government because if you weren't doing it, they would have to pay somebody else to do it. So what is the big deal with that? So that's just another way for them to bloody save money. I mean, like, the only way for the DWP to recover the money was to prosecute Miss Groom. This is what they're saying. So she was charged with benefit fraud offences. Now, without legal representation to assist her, Mrs Groom pleaded guilty which is a very, very silly thing to do in the beginning. It really is. You don't plead guilty straight away because you will get the book thrown at you. Um, and was sentenced to a community order with unpaid work requirements. So she was working a small minimum wage job. She was caring for her mum. Her mum died. 
and left her £16,800. The DWP have got wind of this, come in with the proceeds of Crime Act and retrieved and relieved her of it and <laughs> taken her to court and sentenced to a community order with unpaid work requirements. So not only are they saving money through the benefit system, they're, they're now stealing inheritances using the proceeds of Crime Act and then when they're getting people up into court and getting them to plead guilty, they're then getting a further income out of them by getting them to conduct paid, unpaid work. This, anyone, and I am sick to the back teeth of people telling me, oh, you're exaggerating things, you're paranoid, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're, you're wearing a tinfoil hat. No, mate. You're not wearing your bloody glasses or you've got the blinkers on. Because if you can't if you can't see something wrong with what I've just said, then you, my friend, are the part of the bloody problem. Ignorance is not bliss, despite what you might believe. Now you can ignore reality, ignore it all you want. But what you can't do is ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And we have ignored reality for a very long time. And now the consequences are here. And people don't want to face it. They don't want to take responsibility. I'm I was partly to blame for bringing it here. We all were. We all are. I've said it many times. I don't care how bad you think this is or how good you think it is. We're responsible for it. We are responsible for this society. Because when you go out and you vote for these politicians that are running this, these are the types of things that happen. And, and don't even dare hit me with that bullshit that, oh, we need to vote for them or they get in. They rely on you thinking like that, mate. They rely on you thinking like that because they know it's the vote for the lesser evil. They're still running that evil. And it absolutely drives me mental. I don't like to see anyone being treated unfairly and being stolen from it. Absolutely. It really does. See, that it boils my blood. It really does. Like when you, like some of the, the pensioners that I'd spoken to or the older ladies that I'd spoken to when I was doing the job and there was one in particular with a house association where she was, she was getting charged double. Um, just, it's a brief story. I'm not sure if I've told this story before, but um, she, was, she was getting charged. What had happened was she was getting her house in benefit from, from, from the government um, but what she'd done was she'd set up a bloody direct debit to cover her rent, which meant that her money for her living expenses was actually set up in a direct debit to cover her rent, even though the, 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 the rent was already being covered by the government. And I, I emailed the case manager and I'd said to them, I says, whatever way, this, this woman's load a load a lot of bloody money. Either you've not paid it and she's paid it herself, meaning you'll have to give her it back, or you have paid it, and she's also paid it, meaning the housing association um, it has to give it back. And I said to the old, to the lady, like, I says, well, I says, I'm really sorry what's happened in that. And I explained to her, I says, you you owed quite a lot of money here. And she said to me, oh, I said, that housing association, if they've continued to charge you, even though they've getting that money um, from the government, then I'm sorry, but they're absolutely despicable. They're a despicable outfit. And you know what she said to me? Oh, but they take me to the food bank. And that is a true story. And I can tell you now, I said to the lady, I said, hopefully, I said, whoever you've got in your life, your street, your any, you need to tell somebody about this and tell them what's happened to you. Um, because cause she, was, she was owed five figures, like, it was a lot of money. And she was, she was starving. She was going hungry because she couldn't afford to eat because the money she had for her body, heating, well, she, her electricity was basically eating everything that she had. The money that she was supposed to be getting for eating and living expenses was being taken by this housing association. This is the dystopian world that I've spoken about, and I'll say it again. If you can't see that, that this world has changed drastically over the last 10 years, then you are in denial. So this next part says, like hardened criminals, one DWP employee agreed to speak about Mrs. Groom's case on condition of anonymity. I wonder why that is. <laughs> see, that's the thing, because they know it's wrong. Because if, 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 you, if you're okay with it and you want to tell the truth, you'll do as I've done. 
You'll put your real name out there and you'll put your face on camera in your property and you'll bloody tell the truth. They're asking for anonymity for a bloody reason because they know they're involved, engaged in criminality. And I'm going to say it for the last time, if it's up to me, those bastards are getting charged with these psychopaths because you're in it with them. You're complicit. You've assisted offenders. That's the way I look at you. And you are my enemy. You're my enemy, like. If you're working within these industries and you um, are, 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 are following these processes without a further thought, then I'm very, very sorry, but I class you, you're the enemy. You are the enemy in, in it with them. So, so, so that's what he said, from 2014 onwards, really, they had no excuse for having these overpayments carry on for longer than two or three months. If they're investigating all of the alerts, he told BBC West tonight, DWP should be, should be protecting these people. See, this is a guy under anonymity that works for the DWP saying, DWP should be protecting these people. Again, if you study statement and analysis, you'll see that people always try and tell the truth. And within that, within that statement, you can tell DWP should be protecting these people. He obviously knows they're not, which is why he said it and, and, and raised his right for anonymity to, to do the interview. People for, uh, yeah, DWP should be protecting these people from getting into trouble with their benefits, but instead they're prosecuting them and treating them like hardened criminals using the proceeds of crime act against them. It's appalling. This is a guy inside the DWP that's doing, that, that said this. So, but again, this system's being held up by the people that work there. I mean, some of the work, some of the vile work coaches that you get, they just do not care. They lack, they lack empathy. They lack compassion. They, they, they've got nothing about them. They're in the same place they've been for 20 years or however long it's been. Their lives are obviously miserable and they don't want anybody breaking out of, of, of the bubble. Um, and they'll do everything they can to keep people in it. <laughs> There's work coaches like that all over. But this is, this. I mean, that's news to me that they're using the Proceeds of Crime Act against them. That is just, that's just adding a further layer to the fear. Because it's one thing getting, it's bad enough getting an overpayment letter through. And you saying shit, I've owed them 20 grand or whatever it is, or 10 grand. But at least then you can sort of say, well, pff, I didn't know that had happened. You can maybe look into it and you can set up a payment plan if, it's, if, if, you, if you do indeed owe it. Because there are people that do owe it sometimes. Um, then that's fine. But it's bad enough getting that letter through. But then, if, you, if you're getting something being threatened with the proceeds of crime act, that you could actually go to prison for that. That, that, like I say, it's an, it's an extra layer of fear. And I just wonder, why are they using the Proceeds of Crime Act? Why? To manipulate people into, a, into, into even more fear. Because the person that's in fear is a suggestible person. They'll do almost anything to be brought out of that fear. Cue the government or the people behind the government and they'll offer the solutions that they covertly, to the problems they covertly created. Five years ago, a report from the House of Commons Working Pensions Committee accused the DWP of bullying and harassing those who had been overpaid. Well, I can attest to that. I can attest to that. And not only are they bullying, bullying and harassing the people that's been overpaid, but they're not serving the people that's been underpaid. And I'll come to that in a second. Margaret Greenwood, a Labour MP for Wirral West, told the BBC about 44% of people caring for others more than 35 hours a week are living in poverty. Go and watch my videos and you'll see why that is. She said, she said to then receive a large bill uh, for overpayments that they're unaware of can be devastating for people. Yes, it can. I've just explained that. But you add the proceeds of crime act to be threatened with that to that. It just adds, it adds a, new, a, a new dimension to it. A completely new perspective because at that point you're thinking I could actually go to prison for this and that's when the, the feeling's in the stomach when it sinks it's, it's a horrible feeling no one likes that but that's why this government runs on putting those messages out there so that that feeling goes into the stomachs of the subjects of the country thus being able to rule the museum. Last year the DWP revealed it was seeking to recover 145,567 overpayments of carers allowance. And how many underpayments he's looking to, looking to dispense and give back? That's the number I would like to hear after that. And it is, is, obviously it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It's only about underpayments. It doesn't mention anything about the over... About, it's only overpayments, rather. It doesn't mention anything about the underpayments. 
I wonder why. An extra 26,500 overpayments were added to the total in the last year alone. Yes, I bet they were, but how many of them are actually legitimate and how many are fraudulent? From what I could tell, I would say 70% are fraudulent. I suppose for the W, we are committed to... F this is brilliant, this. it really is. It's so brilliant, it makes me feel sick. We are committed to fairness in the welfare system while protecting the public purse. That's a spokesman for the DWP. I'll read it again. We are committed to fairness in the welfare system while protecting the public purse. Not only are you protecting it, you're bloody enhancing it. And that's what this... And it's not even the public purse. You can't even say that because even though they're stealing this money from people, we, we don't benefit from that. No one's benefiting from that. It's actually getting worse. So where's I, I'm going to ask the question again, where's the money going? Uh, this, and this is how they finish it, right? Claimants have a responsibility to inform DWP of any changes in their current circumstances that could impact their award. And it is right that we recover taxpayers' money when this has not occurred. Right, okay, that, that's fine. But DWP, I will reiterate to you that you have got a responsibility not only to dispense the correct payments, to people. But if people have been overpaid, you need to notify them by law, in writing, with an opportunity to set up a payment plan. And for the vast majority of the time, you are not doing that. So you, my friend, are engaging in fraud also. And some of these despicable, they can't, I can't even call them human beings, they're serfs, drones, robots that don't care about anybody. And I'll tell you something, I feel sorry for their families. And if they, were, if they were my family member, I would be utterly ashamed of them. I would be ashamed of you if that's what you're doing. If you're sitting in these offices and service centres and you're making statements like that whilst all this is going on, then I'm sorry, but you're deeply disturbed and I, and, and I feel sorry for you and you genuinely need to give yourself a shake. Um, because it's, it's infuriating that they're doing this to people when I know what I know. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, like I say, I need to start taking it further. I, I've sent out some emails this morning and yesterday trying to try find the right place to take this to. There was somebody, I looked the other day there and wanted me to go to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not going to that. No chance. It's a Rothschild operation. I want nothing to do with that. I'm no faith in those. It would be a human rights group. I've got another one that I've contacted because we need to try and find out how we can combat this because these videos haven't worked. I know they've helped people, they've helped people understand, but it's not worked because the process has got worse. I, was, I, was, I spoke to a former colleague of mine and I don't know if I can't remember if I said, but she, she was saying that, um, that they've done away with the, the, like, it's changed now, it's limited to what, you, what accounts you can go into, some accounts are locked. It's like, so somebody calls up and there's certain accounts you can't get into. And there was, even when I was there, there wasn't a lot you could bloody do. So it must be, I dread to think what it's like now. And that's why the last person I spoke to, uh, no offence to anyone that's got learning difficulties, but that's what she sounded like. Um, she wasn't with it at all. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not being nasty or horrible or anything like that, but I don't think that kind of person should be doing a job like that. Because I don't think they have the capacity to, to, to sort of know what the consequences of their actions are. And then I had someone else tell me that the platform's been done away with. I'll need to get that confirmed. Um, or you can only use them at certain times now. Now, I did. I, I anticipated that. I wondered that even before I'd done the first video. I thought one of the things they could do to combat this, if I start putting out the processes with the pack form, what they'll then do is, is um, they'll, uh, they'll just do away with it. Which is, if that's true, that's pretty much what they've done. Which wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. And then you, it brings me to the incompetence, incompetence sorry, in service centres and uh, the lack of regard for people's lives, lack of compassion, empathy, whatever word you want to use. And it just seems now that they've got probably the worst people doing this job that have got no emotional comeback that can sit there calmly and collectively telling people that the theft that's going on in their account is, is legal and legit. Um, and people, lo I've had lots of people come back to me and say, Alan, I've used what you said, and that's what they said to me, and they said the same to me, and I would say that the only thing we can do is to keep going, I just keep sending the emails, keep going through the complaints, I'm going to put, I'll put the, the, the next, the complaints email that you can't get online, um, I've actually got it, I'll put it in the description of this video, 
um, and you can start emailing your full testimony to that. They will come back to you um, and they'll deal with it. And once they close the complaint, if you're not happy with the outcome at that point, you can then go to the independent case examiner, which is done through the, the government website. And this is all we can do. And I'm getting lots of reports again from people that are doing this and they're, they're just coming back and saying, no, this is correct. And this is why people are saying, take screenshots of your journals, take screenshots of everything because this is the only way you're going to win because they, they do delete things and there's no doubt about that. There's, there's certain areas that you can't get into um, if they don't want you to. And the, the evidence is always in people's journals because as I've said many times, the amount of lies that's been told by case managers and work coaches and it's policy. They're not going to lose their job for it like because it's policy. It's, they're being told to do it. And this is why they need the worst people to do it, because the best could never, ever do it. They would never be able to lie to somebody that would cost them their dinner at night. They just wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit there and say, right, I'm picking up two grand a month or whatever it is, to sit there and say to people, actually, what you're living on of 260 a month is enough. Because that's, that's essentially what they're doing. They're gaslighting people into believing what they've got is enough, and it's not. And that the deductions are correct, even though they've not been sent any letters. Legally, they have to send you a letter to notify you. How can they just go into your account without your consent? They can't. But they are. They're doing it. And they'll continue to do it while people acquiesce to it. Because that's, that's, that's what's happening. Um, it's, it's the old, what can I do about it? And I get, I, listen, I understand it's very disheartening when some case manager comes back and says, no, this is correct. I get that. Even though you know it's not. But this is what they're doing to people. And like I say, I mean, it's the, 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 the answer is not exactly staring me in the face and what happens with this benefit system. In fact, there's been nights where I've lost sleep over it, thinking about how, how can we do it? How can we dismantle this? What, what is it that needs to trigger it? Because I thought maybe the videos would have done that and they have had an effect, but it's just nowhere near enough because they're still doing it. In fact, they're getting worse. So it's not getting better, it's getting worse. I mean, they often say in situations like this, things get better before they get worse, and then they get better. Or they get worse before they get better, rather, and then they get really good. But I don't know so much. Of that. I wouldn't like to put that message out there to have people believe that they don't need to sort of put their bit in for it, because we all need to do our bit. All of us need to do it. It's as simple as that. And we need to learn about this, this system and this world and this game that's being played on us, because if we don't, we're going to be pawns of it. And then you look at the post office scandal, um, obviously there's more revelations than that. This week, secret recordings that Paula Venels knew as early as 2013, what was going on. And she lied to Parliament. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you in the row, she'll, she'll not get jailed. But the, what they did was, they were putting postmasters in jail as well though, weren't they? So if they're putting postmasters in jail for fraudulent numbers, and bugs on the system like what's on the, the universal credit system, then that Paul of Ennals, and I'm telling you the now, uh, as a British taxpayer and a British citizen, I, I want her jailed. She needs to go to jail, along with Siobhan Brown, who up in up in Ayrshire, who is um, advocating for this new hate hate crime law, claiming that she's all for free speech, a fraud of a woman. Um, I know she's Scottish, but she's got an Australian accent. I wonder if that's why they brought her over to do it, because in Australia, the tyranny over there over the last few years has been has been nothing short of frightening to be honest with you. So I wonder if she learned the ways of fascism over there to bring it to Scotland. Um, apparently she moved over there when she was four and back, came back in 1999. Um, okay, I have no problem with that, that's fine. Just Scottish roots and all the rest of it. But like I said to her in the email, you're still, sent, you're still selling us out. And you're selling us out for your day in the sun. You'll be held accountable as well. They all need to go to jail for what they've done. They do. And people say we need to take them to the gallows. No, no, no. That's too good for them. That's too good for them. Make them suffer the way they've made other people suffer. Put them in a prison cell. I've said it before. Where the processed food that they want to give us and the, the la take all their freedoms away that they want to give us and get them caught up in their boosters like they wanted to give us. And then we'll see. Because that's the only true way that people can be held account accountable. Do unto them as they would have do unto others. I think that's the fairest way. Why not? Paula Venels. I would strip her of everything. Absolutely everything. Well, she was waiting on her trial. And then I would throw her in jail and make sure that she never returned. And if she did, it would be on a very limited life. 
I know that might be a bit harsh, people deserve a second chance, but she knew what she was doing, she deliberately lied, she had the chance to do the right thing and she didn't do it. Siobhan Brown will probably have had chances to do the right thing, but she's not done it. She just pushed ahead because she's a coward and she's scared. And I understand that. Or maybe she's not, maybe she enjoys it. I don't know enough about her. All I know is, is that she's a liar. She's a lying, walking contradiction. That's all I know. Um, because she's not... Um, she claims that she's for free speech, but you can't put out a belt like this and be for free speech. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry, you just can't. Um, and it's, I mean, when you think about the Horizon scandal as well, see if we didn't have the internet and someone told you that, you would say it was, it was nonsense, that it was a conspiracy theory, I don't believe what you're saying. But yeah, it's true. It's the same with this stuff. I mean, I spoke to Richard at the Dynamic Duo and he, he said people question him about me, about saying, surely that can't be true. And I don't want this to be true. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. Um... Just because you don't want something to be true, it doesn't mean it isn't. And there's so many people that just think that I'll just... And it'll not be true. It's, 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 it's not the way of it. In fact, when we bury our heads in the sands, things fester. It festers and it gets worse and worse and worse. We need to deal with it. We need to face it. We need to face the dark night of the soul, man. We really do. Because once we do that, the light can start getting in and we can start painting a better picture because it's on us. Um, it's our subconscious consciousness that, that creates this world. We, it's such a dense reality and look at everything we've created in it. It's amazing. We are amazing. But we live such minute, uninspired lives. It's just... They, and that's not true everybody but the monotonous day is it's the same thing day in day out same job you get so good at the job you can do it with your eyes closed which is a sure way to put yourself to sleep this is why people lose heart it's why they lose their goals lose sight of their dreams because of the monotony the monotony of society man but it doesn't help that when somebody like me comes along and says look this is happening amount of abuse I've had over like screaming and shouting and people getting really angry and you're calling me an idiot. It's like, no, I never said that. I just said, this is, this is, this is what I believe and this is why I believe it. But then they start saying, no, oh, you're saying that I don't know this. It's like, no, I didn't say that. But the point is they start screaming and shouting at you because they're triggered. Their subconscious reminds them of the, of the, of the conscious mind of its programming. It's why, it's why when you get triggered, if someone says something, you get triggered and angry then you know something's wrong with it. You know something's wrong with it. Because you wouldn't be getting triggered and angry. But that's, that's, that's life. That's part of learning respect. That We need to respect what others believe, even if we don't believe it, no matter how stupid we might think it is, because they think we're stupid. So with that said, let's just agree to disagree and have a laugh. That's really all we can do here. And I'm telling you, if you start thinking like that, <laughs> this world will change. But as long as we're sitting angry, scared, worried, jealous, envious, nothing will change. Nothing will ever, ever change. It'll stay the same. It will remain the same as it always has. In fact, it'll just get worse as, 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 it all, as, as it's continued to do, certainly even over the last 10 years. I mean, look how much the world's changed since 2014. I was thinking about it the other day there, like it's obviously the 10 year anniversary of my first videos that I was watching coming up and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I was sitting thinking like, I was just thinking how different it is now. Like when I look out that window, even though everything looks pretty much the same, other than a few different cars out there, it's just changed dramatically in that 10 years, it really has. And any society that breaks down always goes through this. Uh, to get to the next level, I mean, I know this from my spiritual awakening, like when you do awaken, the old life has to go somewhere when it breaks down so that the new one can be, cre be created. For one door, for another door to open, the last one needs to close like, and that's, that's what the breakdown of your life is when you go through it. And when you first go through it, like you're thinking, I need to sign up for this. This is supposed to be peace, love and pretty colours, but <laughs> it's not peace, love and pretty colours. In fact, it's the opposite to that. So there's, so there's misconceptions under awakenings as well. Um, the flower power era, just thoughts. 
that's negative, don't talk about that. Well, it's maybe negative, but it needs to be spoken about because if we don't, it'll get more negative. And that's the way you need to look at it. And I'm gonna keep going as long as I can. Um, I, I want to get this this to some, some group, some human rights group, somebody that can look at this. I, I just, I don't know. Hopefully the answer will come to me as, as it does with many things. Uh, but I'll continue to plod away looking for, for places to, to, to relay this story to. I would like to thank you for joining me on my latest video. Um, I, like I say, I've put out a post earlier. I'm, I'm, I'm going live tonight at 7 o'clock, so I'll see you all on there. And thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your day, okay? Bye.